Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 11th of the June League Code Daily Challenge. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Uh, Stone Game 7, uh, just like FF7. Okay, and yeah, usually I solve these problems live, so it's a little bit slow or whatever. Eh, watch it on 2x or skip to the end or something like that. Uh, you know, it'll be all good. Okay, so let's see. I feel like I've probably done a lot. I've done a lot of stone games. I don't know which one's which, so let's take a look. Um, so, Ailes and Bob takes turn playing a game. Ash goes first. We move left most or the right most stone and get points to some of the remaining stones while you're in the row. The sum of the remaining stones. Okay. The winner is the one with the highest score, and there are no left turns left, okay. Uh, I mean, there's going to be... Yeah, the dynamic programming is the best way to do this. Um, hmm. I'm just going to think about how to uh, explain this a little bit. It, it is game theory, and game theory is kind of hard. I mean, it's not hard, hard, but it's uh, it's just a little bit tricky if you don't have the necessary background. And for this particular part, um, though, yeah... Because uh, eh, cause these kind of game theory dynamic program problems, uh, when you see the solution, you're like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Um, but there is a lot of foundation with respect to game theory and minimax and all that stuff to kind of figure out, um, you know, like how the, the transitions uh, make sense and how the states work and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if that I'm going to get that deeply into it only because like, you know, ah, I said, you know, again, uh, but... There, you know, uh, but you can go years and so forth, uh, just learning about game theory and stuff like that. So, so it is pretty, kind of tricky in that re respect. But you know, uh, I keep saying it. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's counting it at home because I think a, a few days ago I asked people to count it. Uh, I've been really bad at saying you know for some reason. It's like a recent thing I picked up. I don't know where. Anyway, but yeah. So let's let's say that the score, you know, let's say we have a magic function that let us get the sum of the score, and then we just, you know, take the left and the right, or, or, or sorry, take the left or the right, um, and therefore you can make just brute force, right? Because let's assume that you're Alice, uh, you, you're going to try to get the score, your score is going to be whatever score you get when you take the 5 minus, um, yeah, because we're, we're trying to get the difference. We're trying to go, go get the minus whatever score that the other person have, right? And in this case, even though it's not always true uh, in general for game theory, in this case, the game is symmetric. And what what is meant by uh, a symmetric game is that uh, both players are playing the same game, right? So th therefore, you can use one recursive function versus uh, having to write two implementation or something like that, but, but yeah, so I think that's basically the idea. And I'm gonna just write it out real quick, and we're trying to maximize the difference, right? So let's just call it max difference. We let's do a left, right for the index, and we'll we'll come back to the memorization part, but, but yeah, but then, okay. <clears throat> So if left is equal to right, what happens, right? That means that there's only one element left. Um, and in this case, and I always urge people to be very clear, even though I always mess up a lot, uh, with respect to the, just making sure that you're very precise and, and clear to yourself, if not to the code, uh, what these indexes mean, right? And what I mean by that is that in my case, I like my indexes to be inclusive. So that means that left and right are inclusive on a, on a segment or on a range. And therefore, if left is equal to right, that means that you have a range where the left side is equal to the right side, meaning that you have a, a range of one number. So that's basically why I've set my base case. And let's say I have one number, then the sum of the remaining score is going to be zero. So then here we can just return zero, right? Because that's going to be the score, that's going to be your score, and then the game ends, so, so yeah, so you can be a little, I mean, maybe a little bit sloppy, but that's fine. 
uh, in this particular case. Otherwise, okay. Otherwise, we, we take the left, we take the right, and then we take the best, right? So yeah, let, let's say left score is equal to the max diff of left plus one because we took the right plus some scoring function on the, the remaining. I think this one is on the remaining stones value. So let's, you know, we, we're going to fill this in, but let's, let's, uh, let, let's kind of template that for now. And then right score is the same thing, right? We just now, we take the right most one and then we, we score the rest of the things. And then at the way end, we just take the max of left score, right score. Um, this is actually not quite right because I forgot about the gaming part. Um, because, so this is actually wrong, so, uh, my bad. But yeah, but this is the score that you get. And then now it is the other person's turn, right? And so this is the score that he, uh, in this case is Bob or if you're Alice or the other way around. So this is the other person's score. And because in this particular part, you want, you want to maximize the difference, um, the difference between this is your score and this is their score in a recursive way, right? So that's basically the, um, the thing here. And then, and then after that, we just take the max difference between uh, the left score and the right score. And that's pretty much the idea here. And you can, you know, like I said, we have to fill this part out, but, but, but that's pretty much it. You can just do something like this and n minus one where n is equal to length of stones. And that's, that's, that would be your answer. Of course, I'm skipping a few things, or I skipped a few things. One is that this will be exponential because every item has a branching fun, a uh, branching factor of two, but the thing to notice is that left and right. Well, well, for every possible input, or sorry, for every input to this function, uh, given an implicit input of songs as well, uh, for every input of this function to the left and right, uh, if you have the same input, you get the same output, right? So that's the key thing about memorization, and because of that, then we can memorize. And how do we memorize, right? Well, left is equal to, uh, from 0 to n, right is technically from left to to n, but, but also roughly 0 to n. So together, there are n square states, or possible inputs, possible inputs. Each input now, now that we memorize, we only do, you know, a constant number of operations. So each input takes all of one time. So O of n square inputs times O of one time is equal to O of n squared uh, time complexity, total time. And space is pretty much the same in this case. Uh, you can imagine that this is, yeah, that's assuming we memorize, which we should. So that, let's take, set that up. So is cached is equal to first times, um, mm, yeah. And then Cash is equal to, let's just call it, <clears throat> shouldn't matter actually, so yeah, because you're supposed to overwrite it anyway, uh, because you use is cache. So then now we can do a very simple if is cached, uh, left, right, return cache of left, right, otherwise, left, uh, oops is cache left right is equal to true cache left right is equal to the the best score and then we return the cache oops yeah um i wanted to say something about this but i forgot what it was huh I mean, I know that I have to finish the score function, but, but, uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, I don't remember. So yeah, so let, now let's handle the score function, right? Well, the score function of of the range is just the sum of all the numbers. If notice that I, I did skip a little bit ahead and said that each input takes all of one time, but if the, if we do a naive for loop here, then this would take all of n time each loop and in that case 
given that n is equal to a thousand, uh, it becomes n cube, and n cube where n is equal to a thousand is too slow. Uh, where n where n is square is fast enough or should be fast enough. Please don't make me do it. Bottoms up. Uh, for tonight, anyway. But yeah, but now, but the the key thing to know is that the sum of of this right. Oops. This is of course just equal to the sum of the first uh, first uh, left elements and someone like that, right? Maybe maybe I'm off by one, but that's the general idea. Um, and then here you just uh, get the score of the first uh, right number of digits minus the score of first of the left number of digits. So I think maybe left minus one, I think, actually, because you want to be right inclusive. So something like this, right? So that that's basically the idea. Um, and we can actually pre-calculate this. Uh, and if you want to see the formula, oops, you know, the formula is just given that you have, you know, um, eh, something like this, uh, a sub n, right? Um, and you want to try to figure out a sub k plus dot 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 plus a to n um, and you can kind of see it right where if you line them up if you sub if you oops to get this number which is you know let's say this is left and this is right and then it is just exactly the same as or this all the way to a sub right mm, minus or this something like that right um, so that's basically the idea because now if you have this you subtract it from this you get this left um, and that's basically the idea here um, and there's actually Sorry, my allergies kicks in at weird times and I have trouble speaking. Uh, New York is crazy. But yeah, so basically the idea here is um, the premise between prefix sum in which uh, normally I would have just done it with prefix sum. And that's basically the idea. Uh, so because now the prefix sum, and that's what this is, right? The sum of the first n number, that's literally the prefix sum. So so then we can just input it that way. Um so yeah, uh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, for x and stones. Uh, this is the way that I write it in Python, uh, but you, you can do it in other ways. Basically, it looks at the last number, uh, which, does, which is the sum, and then you add it to the current number. And yeah, and then now instead of doing this, we can just do this. Um, but I don't know this because this is a million function course. So for optimization reasons, and I don't think this is necessary in other languages. But I've definitely gone bin before in uh, in lead code. So I'm just gonna, you know, substitute it. What this here? This is this plus one, and this is this. Uh, yeah. So. So yeah. So I am gonna make this optimization. Even though I think in um, in practice. In, in real life, I would definitely recommend uh, I would definitely recommend submitting it first um, because readability is more important and I think this is definitely less readable but you know but it is a better slightly better performance right so I'm gonna do something like that though hmm. I hope that I don't have make uh, any typos here. But let's run it real quick. So this looks good for this one. Let's run it for, well, at least this case. Cool. Yeah, so the way that I would think about this, of course, um, hopefully this is right. Or run fast enough. Yeah, if it runs too slowly, then it, oh, that's weird. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm, maybe I have a weird typo.
Why did it take so long? <coughs> okay. Hmm. That's awkward. What I was going to say was that, uh, the, you know, for the, the beauty of dynamic programming or memorization, depending on how you do it, is that um, is that you're basically doing brute force, but doing it in a way such that you reuse the same uh, inputs. So that's how um, I'm more confident about it than I would be using a greedy solution, say, because I don't have to prove anything, because I don't have to prove anything, because I'm trying every possibility, essentially. Uh, so that's basically the idea, except for that I'm wrong, clearly, because I got this wrong answer. But, hmm, is my base case wrong? Maybe that's why. Hmm. That's weird. Weird. Oh, whoops. Weird. Hmm. Oh, I am I'm being dumb. Um I forgot that I I started with zero, so so these indexes are off by one. Uh I uh, do, 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 do. Okay, Larry. Uh, I I I remember having a I I've been really bad at implementation lately, as followers of my stream might notice. But I I don't know why. I maybe it's just the heat or one of those things. Uh, I still haven't fixed my AC by the way, in case y'all are wondering. But I don't know. But I've just been really bad about implementation lately. Like this is pretty, whatever. But um, it makes me sad. Hopefully this is right. Otherwise it makes me more sad. If it's time limit exceeded, I guess I just have to rewrite it. But uh, but yeah. So this is good. Um, we already did the complexity. But like, like I said, the proof is because I'm doing every possibility essentially. Um, this gives me confidence that I would not have otherwise. So that's why I. You know, I, I like doing it this way. Uh, I, I like dynamic programming for the most part. But yeah, um, silly up by one aside, uh, that's all I have. Um, I probably have solved this problem before, so I'm curious what I did last time. So let's get, let's take a look. Because uh, I probably did it during a contest too, because I, I don't know when I did it. But, but I feel like, I don't know how recent, but it feels well, like, I don't know, seven? Okay. Oh, it wasn't even a hard, it was a medium. Hmm. Oh, I did have a time limit exceeded in Python. What was my solution? Dun, dun, dun. I did do a bottoms up was my solution. So, yeah. Um, in case you're curious what this looks like, this is what this looks like. Um... And I guess I only did it six months ago. It wasn't that long ago. It felt familiar, but maybe not. I don't know. My memory is shot. Um, funny thing is that, oh, huh. Funny thing is that six months ago when I did this during the contest, um, so all the code looks more or less the same. The only issue that I had, and I did have this thing fixed correctly, the only issue I had was that this time limit exceeded because of two things. Uh, I wake, I don't remember this particular problem, but I remember these optimizations, which is why, why when I wrote the code that I taught, um, it's a little bit, you know, this is the code that I wrote today. Um, that's why I made these optimizations, and that's why I talked about them, um, because because I've been making this a million function calls makes it slower, or cho and choose two, which is I guess technically not a million, but but still half a million. It adds up apparently long enough for the time limit exceeded. LRU cache also has a overhead that's higher than you know just keep, keeping track of arrays and stuff like that. So yeah, that made it time limit exceeded. I I probably was not happy about this because this is way, you know, like it's the same idea, same code or whatever. Um, since I did do this during a contest. You probably could see me solve this, or I'll put a link below on how I did it during the contest. Uh, how I, yeah, because I'm just curious about how I did it during the contest. It was a, it was six months ago, but I, it's so long ago these days. Which contest was this? 
time flies when you're having fun. Uh, ooh, yikes. Yeah, I guess it is what it is. What was Q4? Hmm. Oh, this is the Q-Boards one. I should have gotten this one quicker. I don't know why it just took half an hour. I knew what I wanted to do quickly. But anyway, that's a different spiel. Anyway, that's all I have for this problem. Uh... Let me know what you think. Let me know how you did. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Join me on Discord. Hope y'all have a great weekend. Uh, and stay good. Stay cool. Have to good mental health. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.